Pharmaceutical Processing, in conjunction with Interfex 2017, presents Interfex Live. We're going to be talking about challenges and opportunities in developing a new plastic film for bioprocess activities. So my first question is, I mean, is this all stem from the uh, single use? And what's, driving, what's driving the plastic film in this case? So there are a number of uh, things for driving this. Uh, the, the first, really from a, from a GE perspective, is we've built a lot of our size and scale in our single use portfolio today through acquisition. With those acquisitions came a lot of good products in, in existing films, some of those which uh, were tailored to work in a particular unit operation, but not necessarily across the, the whole portfolio of unit ops. Uh, so with our endeavor to enable outcomes on end-to-end -end processing, uh, this helps bring a, a logical contact material that can work in the full process and lower the validation hurdle uh, for our customers. So uh, for the customer input, uh, we, we've been able to take that active management of the supply chain, have a more strategic relationship with our supply chain partners, and build in some of the transparency and uh, step up in characterization that they've been looking for. So we view this as a, a life cycle management uh, product for our single use business. I've mistakenly forgot the intro. Parrish, uh, CTO at uh, GE Healthcare. We've done this a few times. Susan Burke, uh, Ross, and Nicholas. All from GE Healthcare, we're gonna be talking about that. So this is, let me ask the question of the group. So this is not the only film that you guys obviously have utilized in your single use. So what's so different about it? And why did you go down this road? Sure, so in, in this case, you know, we took the feedback from our customers to really take the opportunity to work with our uh, film manufacturing partner, Sealed Air, um, in order to build this film from the ground up specifically for bioprocess applications. You know, even down to the raw material selections, the resins, the additives were, were selected specifically for the, the applications in the bioprocess space. The structure of the film built upon the needs based upon the, the specific applications and all the requirements across the board when we look at our product lines that go across upstream to downstream applications. If I've been using your products before, I mean, you know, so do I not use them now? What's what's going to happen going down the road here? This, these becoming the legacy? Is this is the follow-up? No, we, we will continue to offer all of our existing products in the films that they are in right now because they work fantastically in the applications that they're used in. In this case, we don't have in our portfolio a film that can go all the way across the board in all of the applications and this allows us to uh, expand our capabilities to offer that. Can you give us a sense of what capabilities we're talking about comparison wise? Is that a good question you guys tell yeah, me? No, so okay. it's, a, it's a good question and um, some aspects of, of the control are, are within the supply chain monitoring um, additives at the raw material level, at the film level, and ensuring that at the GE product level that there's no breach of our supply chain um, and any contaminant that could be in, in somebody's extruder for some resin from the last product they ran getting in there, right? So this higher level of assurance, uh, it, takes, it takes effort to manage this on, on seven films that we have now working through our portfolio is, is not sustainable. So to be able to step up the service level, the security of the supply chain, the active management of that supply chain, that was one of the other benefits for us besides some of the physical benefits of uh, really overcoming some of the challenges of film properties. And, and I'd say the biggest there that we had to deal with was the competing nature of uh, film that's flexible to be able to handle a lot of flexural stress in applications, uh, but also maintain good barrier properties to not shift pHs, osmolalities for bulk drug substances, and to not evaporate or concentrate products that could have very long time shelf lives. Along those lines then, so what do you tell your customers about cell compatibility and suitability? Anybody want to take a run at that one? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, with the development of working with Sealed Air, who has uh, a 
strong business and healthcare is already supplying films in the pharmaceutical industry, working with a partner who has that knowledge to begin with, you know, really incorporating the needs of bioprocess. And as we were working through the development and we screened 22 different film prototypes and heavy emphasis on cell culture compatibility with sensitive cell lines, um, all of the biocompatibility standard requirements that our customers are looking for, and, and really putting the rigor into ensuring that we have a, a film candidate that will be suitable for all sensitive cell lines. Yeah, S Susan makes a good point because um, I think, as she said, we supplied 22 variants to, uh, to GE. Uh, but in reality, we had done a lot of work ahead of that, including some, uh, some cell testing ourselves at the laboratory in Italy. So I think we produced something like 50 pilot line structures before we got down to the 22, which then went on to GE for further testing. No, I, just want to, I just wanted to add that uh, you know, on, the, on the customer side, we're responding, you know, GE is responding to customers uh, across the industry about more transparency, about the supply chains, uh, more um, intricate testing of the quality of the film, uh, the biocompatibility of the films with cell lines that are sensitive, as Susan recommended uh, or, or mentioned. And, and then, uh, as Ross said, um, a, a film that's uh, better suited potentially for more stressful processes. Uh, as, as cell processing and bioprocessing advances and applications, um, we needed uh, we need to look forward uh, towards a, a film and a structure that would have uh, robustness, improve robustness as we see uh, how processing advance. What's your definition of a more robust process or a more aggressive process? Yeah, so one of the earlier questions you had asked, uh, one of the earlier questions you had asked about what was different than taking on some of the earlier films is. You know, we've had the benefit of seeing where they've encountered challenges. And, and some of those challenges are, are coming from process intensification. When you want to get more productivity out of a bioreactor and, and pump up the volume, so to speak, you're running higher sparge rates, higher KLAs, you need more um, oxygenation uh, over time. Then the filters can sometimes become occluded with either foam, some level of, uh, of um, moisture, vapor. And then you start to see some pressure build up in bags. And, and this is a, a real challenge when you get into these highly intense processes. So we're seeing the tip of the iceberg there, but we can now respond to it with a material uh, that we feel pretty confident is, is going to get our customers to where they want to go based on where we've already seen challenges occur. And, and for the microbial processes, as you know, you know, GE has launched the 500 liter scale single use microbial fermenter where the stresses are really elevated on mass transfer and mixing rates. So we needed a film that could would be suitable for that application as well. Which, you know, the reason, I think, thanks Parrish and Ross, I tell you, the, the process intensification, I, I think we talked about at least three times last year, was like it was a hot topic. So is that, the, is that what brings people to ask you about sealed film? Or what, 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 what prompts them to come and talk to you about this? I'm leading up to when do I find out about this, you know what I mean? That's, so what, what, what would make me want to call you? That's, did I make, am I making sense? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I think there's a, a number of things. So I think the first subset of customers who would be interested in this are, are, are those who spent the last several years at conferences, um, you know, saying that we don't have enough security in the supply chains underneath them and that a single use is going to grow up to deliver commercial drugs on a very large scale to patients that uh, we've got to sure a lot of that stuff up, right? And I think Nicholas can talk a little bit about uh, what we've done here, uh, not stopping at the GE N minus one part of the supply chain, but moving into the, the resin suppliers and their suppliers as well. So is there a different, Nicholas, help me out, there's a differentiation between an intense process and process security. So what are we talking about? Fail yeah, and so that was, failures? Yeah, so that was the first set. I mean, that's broadly the, the foundation that um, the material sit on. And then I think if you're an existing user of GE Films, um, it can make life simpler. If we take our products that work today very well in the upstream space and talk about media prep in a Accelerex uh, mixer, uh, a C-Train in a wave rocking bioreactor, and a stirred tank production reactor, 
and being fed by some feeds from our high clone organization, uh, that could come in three films. Uh, if a customer has not yet validated that process or a drug manufacturer has not yet validated that process, that's a lot of work to do. Um, it puts a lot on their to-do list. To be able to do that in one film that works across those applications and be able to qualify for uh, the worst case scenarios within each of those applications and some of those being common, uh, it's a much more efficient and I would say a better approach to managing their major contact surface of their plant as we transition to what used to be you know, stainless steel to now plastic films. Nicholas, I cut you off there. No, that's fine. I think um, the point that Ross was making was more about the question of continuity of supply and, and consistency in the film itself. So um, Sealed Air is you know, one of the biggest purchasers of resins for flexible packaging applications. And that means that we have very close relationships with the with the resin suppliers. You know, if you look at if you look at the market for resins for medical packaging or medical products in general, that equates for less than half of one percent of all resin manufactured globally. So um, even if you're buying a, a material which has a resin which is a high volume resin, you're still a very very small fish in the pond and therefore you're really always going to be susceptible to risk of change and change is the worst thing because you end up with revalidations and all of the you know all the work involved so um we've been able to work with our suppliers um given our volume given our mass our critical mass to actually get um extended change notification right to buy uh right to buy facilities and that will give us the, um, a much greater safety net if you will uh, in terms of any risk of change over time. And that's, that's the critical piece there in terms of continuity and consistency of the product. Um, so there are no surprises for the users going forwards. What do you have? I think so I got it. I mean, one of the biggest problems we have in our end of the industry is variation in suppliers. And it's ironic that you would say it's about how much you buy because it's surprising it turns out that we think we're a big supplier and we buy a tenth of a percent. So we're subject to somebody else's requirements, our requirements, so we just have to lot select. That's not the situation I get in this thing. So in your particular case, you assure that simply based on the, the critical mass that you're at, right? Yeah, so, so given the volume that we have across the whole of the sealed air organization, um, we have those relationships in place with the, the resident suppliers. And so we've worked with them from the outset having identified the resins that work well for things like cell cultures, the yield for the cells, for um, the, you know, the, the rigidity of the film, the, the, you know, the flexibility of the film that's required. Um, we've then worked with the suppliers uh, to develop the resins, in some cases, which meet the requirements. So things like the antioxidant, the Ergophos 168, which has been identified as, as having you know, um, byproducts which are, which are negative for culture growth we've been able to eliminate them, pretty much eliminate them from the film because we have the relationships with the suppliers. So Parrish, is it, this is exclusive? For G, this is an exclusive GE product, then. is that right? Correct. Okay, I'm just making sure I got that straight. So Susan, uh, what, you know, samples, prototypes, product literature, when does this stuff come up available? Yeah, so on our uh, GE Life Sciences website, um, right at the beginning of it, you'll see the Fortem film and there's a button to click, and we have uh, evaluation kits available right now um, that include um, sample bags with three different lots that are our qualification lots of the film. So customers can order them, you know, do some qualification work, try the film um, for their applications, and uh, you know, we'll certainly be rolling out more information throughout this year and um, working on a lot of the yeah. launches. It's really launch is occurring in kind of an iterative way. You know, the next piece uh, will be a full dossier, kind of a regulatory support guide for the film. It should be available by end of May. You know, that'll include the ENL analysis for the EPOG protocol and all, all that good stuff. Um, and then from there, we'll develop product from this film in an iterative way. And um, a complimentary investment has been made there in supply chain as well to build up some capacity. Uh, to manufacture product from the film. I think maybe one of the things that 
because it's either maybe the way I ask questions or the way I listen. But I wanted to back up just with the strategy of what got you to Fordham then. All right, why don't we go back and say, yo, what was the development strategy? I know you touched on it. Let me just make sure we're clear on that. What was this, what's the strategy here? Was to replace everything or? Yeah, so the strategy was, again, at the beginning, a platform film. So we started off by looking at those unit operations and basically saying, where have we had challenges with our existing products? Where have we seen the signs of stress? What are the hot points? Um, you know, we knew the intensified bioreactor was one. Uh, we know the rocking bioreactor with wave and the flex fatigue that, act, that that creates is another. We know having our high clone business and having shelf life on processed fluids for up to two years, that pH and, and things like OTR, oxygen transmission, moisture transmission are important. So what we tried to do was kind of shortlist the uh, film decathlon, taking the 10 challenging things. We know dropping a 20 liter bag from a height of five feet and making sure it doesn't break is a challenging test, right? Um, so with that sort of what we call fail fast, fail early approach, we then went through a down selection approach where we would take prototypes which came in series from sealed air um, and then we would run them through that gauntlet usually starting with the flex fatigue because that was one of the um, most difficult uh, things to balance with the other properties of film when you get into the films they're multi-layer for a reason because each material has trade-off properties and, and competes with another if you want to make some layer thicker you might need to give in, a, in another layer of the film so a down selection seemed like the, the way to get there. And uh, to be honest with you, we were banging our heads in the wall a little bit with some of the flex fatigue challenges and uh, some help from the GE Research Center, the old plastics brain trust there, developing some novel methods to measure flex fatigue, brought us from taking prototypes and determining how they fail in that mode of operation from about 30 days to about one day. And you know things really started to accelerate from there. Um, along those seven prototypes, things like post-gamma uh, compatibility, cell culture, um, application testing, we've done over 200 observations through that process to arrive at what we thought was the final structure and put the stake in the ground on it and sitting on qualification lot material now. As a potential user then, my, I guess people, the first question is going to be, what's the contact film? You know, I mean, you want to address that a little bit? I mean, uh, you know, we talked it briefly before we started on I mean, just yeah, the contact. The, the fluid contact surface of that film is a specifically selected blend of polyethylene and cyclic olefin copolymer. And the you know cyclic olefin copolymer is not currently used today in the bioprocess space, but it's certainly not new to the pharmaceutical industry. It's used in vial as well as syringe applications. <coughs> And the application now in bioprocess allows us to offer a contact surface that has excellent moisture, prop moisture barrier properties in addition to a, a low extraction profile. This cyclic olefin copolymer acts as a slip agent or anti-block agent, which allows us then to not have to introduce small molecule additives that are notorious um, as extractable compounds and the, the potential to interact with the cell culture. So by eliminating that and providing this, this alternative, we are able to provide a cleaner uh, surface to our customers. This is something that you source as well. Yes. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we use that material for some other applications, so we work with the vendor to, uh, to create this grade for this uh, film. So, um, we talked about high clone. You want to, you know, look, the high clone product is going to be offered in this film. Or did I, did I hear that one right? Let me make yeah, sure that's I correct. got that. Yeah, okay. some of that stability work is, is already underway. Um, for those products, they, we do have to prove shelf life. Uh, there wasn't room in the stability cabinets to do the whole portfolio all at once, but we are going to uh, vertically integrate our bag manufacturing. Uh, to our high clones, bulk liquids uh, process and, and offer their products in this film as well. I got that straight. So yeah, high clone media buffers and process solutions. Bags for those, those products. Sorry, I thought I messed it up. Yeah, so I think I, I wanted to, maybe we can talk about you know 
when I think GE and I think sealed, you know, so what's the working relationship? I mean, what, what you know, yeah, it, the it, it, it's excellent. It's right. excellent. Um, I mean, we've been running this project for something like five years. Um, so, you know, it's been a, it's been an ongoing process. Um, from the start, you know, we both, we both wanted to develop this film very much. So it was always been a very open uh, process, you know, a lot of collaboration. Um, you know, as an example, I was, uh, I was up in at the new GHQ headquarters last week, uh, two weeks ago now, uh, with our VP of core R&D. And we were in the room together and we were talking and we had the first break and he was there to talk about other things, uh, some of our other innovation uh, spheres. And he said, if I didn't know who was in the room was from Sealed Air, I wouldn't be able to tell because the collaboration and the interaction is so close. So, uh, you know, we've developed a, a strong relationship over, over the last uh, five years and, uh, you know, we, we intend to progress with that. So what what triggered the get together there? You know, usually it is, you know, is that an appropriate question? I mean, well, I mean, you know, as I said earlier, I mean, G has been listening to the industry uh, and to the and to the working group, the industry working groups, BPOG, SUTAP, and others, uh, regarding uh, supply chain security for single-use technology, regarding um, potential leachables and extractables that could be deleterious to their processes, uh, to standardizations and controls. Uh, to variability, uh, lot to lot, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in response to that, uh, you know, this strategy is, is partially a response to the customer's needs. And GE has made a very substantial investment to achieve what you're hearing today. Uh, and then for the customer, obviously, the additional benefit is simplification of the, of the validation burden. So instead of having to validate numerous, you know, films for their processes, uh, they can validate one film and use it across all of their processes. So that's another benefit for you know for the for the customer. Uh, and you already heard the benefits for GE. It simplifies our supply chain. That it, that in, improves the assurance of quality, the assurance of control, uh, and uh, is, is, is for, you know is provides an additional protection for the customers. Yeah, from the sealed air side, we've been making films for. Uh, for IV bags, for parenteral nutrition, and things like that, large volume parenterals for over 25 years. So we're familiar with the space. We have the right kind of facilities, clean room manufacturing, uh, and also that whole existing level of traceability. Now, the, need, the transparency that's being looked for in this market is another step forwards. Um, so we had to take a long, hard look at that as well, because you know, uh, in general, plastics manufacturers are not necessarily that keen on revealing their, their recipes, but um, we, we took a view on this, so we've looked at it. Um, you know, we trust GE's judgment in what's required for the market, uh, and we want to, uh, to be able to do that. So we've, you know, we've, we've made some changes internally as well, but it came from the fact that we had that core competency in producing these multi-layer films for the pharmaceutical industry already, um, and you know, we wanted a strong partner to, to develop a film with. There are already existing films out there, we needed a partner to make a strong entry into the market. Okay, so, so let's talk about the rollout. Just so, so I mean, when I come to these things myself, I say, yeah, that's a really great idea. And when I find that I can't find that or get it, or you know, to avoid the frustration, what I wanted was, can we be pretty clear about, you know, okay, you go and you push the Fordham button, right? But what's the rollout really going to? What's the rollout? Because you would say it was going to be sequential. Or, can we get into that a little bit detail? Sure. So, about the May time frame of this year is when we'll have out our, our comprehensive validation guide. You know, this is going to contain all the compendial information about the film. It's going to have a lot of information about the raw material components, um, explain fundamentally the, the choices for resin selection and, and what performance they drive. Uh, cell culture compatibility testing, demonstration of gamma compatibility, all the physical stuff pre, post gamma, pre aging of the film. This is sort of the Bible of, you know, this, this is why we feel we've got a film that's going to work in all of our product lines, and it'll include some application testing. And then from there, we're going to be manufacturing product with the Fordham film under our own roof in Westboro. So uh, for that, uh, we will be rolling out first the uh, wave 
product line. Uh, I expect that to, to come in the autumn uh, of this year. Uh, the product design for that is not changing, but we'll, we'll offer the, the same product in this film as an option to those that are already on the market. Uh, the second launch in the iteration will be the storage bags, uh, where we are redesigning our, our 2D storage bags that we offer today. Uh, we will maintain the supply of those bags, but we are bringing in semi-automated equipment uh, so that we can scale up and, and also reduce variability in, in the manufacturing that we do on the bag chamber itself. And then lastly, in the case of Accelerex, uh, we're bringing equipment in-house to be able to manufacture our Accelerex product under our own rooftop, which today is done at a, at a contract manufacturing partner. And we will continue to offer the legacy product from the contract manufacturing partner as well. So we talked a little bit earlier about the security supply aspects, and that was focused um, a lot more on the film itself. But we're also going to have some redundancy on some of our very key products uh, in terms of where we manufacture and having multiple uh, points of manufacture as well. So we move the needle in, in that regard also. So it will be iterative uh, in the launch. You know, wave storage bags followed by Accelerex, and you know we're hoping to get all the products out of the gate by uh, Q1 of next year. So it's wave storage Accelerex maintaining legacy products so that you maintain your customers and new customers clearly this is the route older customers are going to you're going to time out and continue to support that that's that's right, right? yeah okay. i think opportunistically you know folks will will find areas where current products you know could be improved on in some areas and and opportunistically might might pull this this film in but for sure um, you know, the big value is felt by those who are looking at an end-to-end -end processing solution by GE and uh, don't have to take the Baskin-Robbins approach. Okay. And what if they want to take the bull by the horns and transition? What kind of, yeah, what's that scenario look like? You know, I mean, let's get with it. End of legacy, on to the new... Yep. What kind of, what's that scenario going to look like? So, I think... You know what I mean? probably why we're putting so much focus on that data package. You know, the, the more characterization that, that we can put out there, the more they can our customers can compare CTQs, the easier we can, we can make that transition. Um, depending on the customer process and where they are in their clinical pathways, we'll also have, you know, some impact on their degrees of freedom to, to make a transition. But we're certainly willing to, to work with our customers and, and help take on what we can as a supplier to make that transition as easy as possible. What about the regulatory demand? Go ahead, Parrish. No, I, I would just want to add to Ross's comment that we already work with many customers who are transitioning from other suppliers or CMOs to GE's supply technology, CMOs uh, uh, technology. Right. So we're very practiced at the business, yeah. the science, right. the science of demonstrating product comparability, and product quality comparability, uh, from one bag film to our bag film. We've been doing that for years. Uh, so the process science is well established, the analytics are well established, and the, the biocompatibility uh, is well established. So those, those methods are, are well in hand. So these compromise, so that, that background would help you, your clients to develop like a comparability protocol or from, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, a lot of the times the great ideas are always stalled out because of like, you know, red tape regulations, delay, stability, I mean, but it sounds to me like you've got the essence of the comparability protocols or whatever you need in that case. You understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I think each situation's unique and, okay. and we'll have the groundwork to compare what's important if someone knows their CTQs because I would, I believe, you know, at the start, we've done a better job at, rather than guessing at what the CTQs are for bioprocessing, that's what this is about, right? It's taking what we've learned over the last 10 years and, and taking that knowledge and putting it to work. So um, I wouldn't sit here and say we have a, uh, a pre-made uh, comparability protocol, but if the customer knows what's important to them and what drives variability and what makes their process work, it's certainly a conversation that we can have and add a lot of value to and, and help guide what a comparability protocol would look like. Okay, uh, yes, go ahead. Sorry, no, I was gonna say the other thing is that, um, you know, going back to, to when we started this project, there was still, um, a, a lot of disagreement in the industry between BPSA and BPOG about what kind of testing and should be available on these materials. Um, that's kind of 
you know, they've worked together, the two groups have worked together. So we now have um, a route to market, if you will. And to my knowledge, this, this is the first film that will have that full testing in place. So again, you know, that facilitates, that facilitates acquisition by people. Well, it sounds to me like you guys got it queued up pretty good. Just got to hit it straight, right? I don't, you know, anyway, straight. enough golf metaphor. Anyway, um, what are the significant investments you guys making in a single-use area? Who wants to take that one? Yeah, I can start. So from a technical perspective, for example, we've um, recently invested over $5 million in setting up an extractables laboratory. So in-house now, we can do all of the testing on our own products, and we'll soon be rolling out uh, the opportunity for customers to work with us and we provide the service to them to be able to do extractables testing as well. So that was that's a significant value add to our customers because we understand our products and materials the best and by working with us directly on that, you, you know, it, it's an easier flow of information. That complementary supply chain investment that I mentioned is bringing our manufacturing clean room space to uh, about 3x of its current size uh, to make room for new equipment, uh, semi-automated, uh, two-dimensional bag manufacturing, uh, as well as semi-automated three-dimensional bag manufacturing. Um, up until, until this point, uh, our manufacturing technique has been rather manual. Um, so again, we see this as another opportunity to reduce variability uh, and also to be able to start to capture more real, real time data and, and put some analytics in, into that process as well. Uh, so there's a step function change in, in how we manufacture. In, in addition, um, uh, we've added cell line testing for every lot. So, cell line you know, with sensitive cell lines uh, that have shown sensitivity to uh, extract and sort of leachables in the past. In this way, we can make sure that the quality assurance is there, the quality of the product is there on a lot-to-lot -lot basis. Well, thank you very much. It was an excellent discussion.